dear chairman, dear colleagues, I would like first to, to thank uh, Professor Christophe uh, Genevich and Professor Henri Bismuth uh, to give me uh, the opportunity to, to be here with you and to present uh, this, this case. We choose uh, with Laurence um, a case of uh, bronchobiliary uh, fistula. Um, this is a man of uh, 63 years old, and he was uh, managed uh, in the beginning uh, outside in a peripheral uh, center. He was diagnosed, he was diagnosed uh, with a cholangiocarcinoma of the middle bile duct, and the surgeon, uh, <coughs> the, the surgeon prepared. Uh, 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 curative uh, intent uh, surgery with a uh, bile duct segmental resection associated with lymphadenectomy and a uh, Rouen Regret hepatico jejunostomy on both right and left bile ducts. Unfortunately, at the pathology report, uh, the resection was incomplete with the uh, presence of uh, in situ carcinoma on the section of the right hepatic duct. So, the patient was referred to uh, Bordeaux, and we decided uh, to perform reoperation to uh, Eton to offer a chance of uh, uh, obtaining R0 resection. So uh, we performed right hepatectomy with hepaticogegenostomy on the left hepatic duct uh, after portal vein embolization. The pathology report was good. Re-resection re 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 was R0 with high-grade dysplasia on the right hepatic duct, but no dysplasia on the left hepatic duct. And in the, in the first uh, day following surgery, uh, the, the post-operative course was uh, uneventful. And at day 10, after a right hepatectomy, he presented fever and acute respira respiratory distress. The drain uh, did not show uh, any bill leakage. And at biology, uh, we found uh, hyperleucocytemia with uh, increased level of the reactive protein. And uh, the liver test show, showed um, cholestasis and uh, moderate elevation of uh, transaminase. This is the CT scan performed 10 days after surgery. So I re sorry, I repeat uh, the CT scan. which showed um, many things, atelectasis of the right uh, inferior lobe of the, of the lung, uh, associated with um, pleural effusion, uh, subphrenic abscess uh, in contact with the cut liver surface and uh, ischemia of the segment four may be due to the resection of uh, the, the, the middle hepatic vein during hepatectomy. So the patient uh, developed um, uh, a severe sepsis uh, who required uh, management in the intensive care unit during uh, more than three weeks with uh, multiple lines of uh, antibiotic therapy, iterative drainage of uh, pleural effusions without sign of, uh, of bile leakage uh, at uh, every drainage, and temporary hemodialysis for acute renal failure. While well, fin finally uh, the, sepsi the sepsis uh, uh, disappeared, the silicone drain was removed and the patient was discharged more than two months after right hepatectomy. And 
Less than uh, two years after surgery, he was admitted at the emergency department near home for fever and balioptysis. Uh, the doctor uh, placed uh, a percutaneous drain after uh, performing CT scan. I don't have uh, the CT scan, but there uh, a picture showing a pulmonary abscess. And uh, at the report, there was uh, no uh, abnormalities at the, the uh, abdomen. The patient was then referred uh, in our department. So at this time, uh, we suspect a bronchobiliary fistula. What will you, what will you suggest? Any comments? Well, a comment. I was very much relieved that the case was not operated by you in the first place, apparently. Sorry? I because don't... the case was not operated in your center, the first operation. The first operation was not uh, it was very made much in our about center. That. Yeah. Because, I mean, there are several things that can be said about the first and second operation. Yeah. But now. Now. Any question? I have an idea, but what uh, question for the audience? What would you do? Uh, certainly this patient needs biliary imaging because it's not normal that he develops uh, yeah. the fistula going up in the lung two years later. I mean, there is something wrong with the biliary yeah. anastomosis. Yeah. So uh, we decided to, to um, perform a percutaneous uh, transhepatography, uh, transhepatic cholangiography in order to uh, identify uh, biliary obstruction uh, structure on the anastomosis, which could uh, um, impair uh, the uh, outflow to build leakage, and uh, even uh, identify the, the pathway uh, uh, in the, in the within the transdraphiamatic way. So this is uh, uh, the sequence. This, this is not the first opacification, but trust me, there, were, there was no uh, structure on the uh, bilionteric anastomosis. As you can see, there is uh, on, the, on the left, uh, on the right side, the picture showing uh, uh, an ascending uh, transdraphematic pathway with uh, communication with uh, uh, pulmonary uh, abscess. Uh, uh, then we, we perform a CT scan to confirm uh, the uh, situation of the drains and the absence of uh, uh, residual collection. Yes. 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 And in the following days uh, after drain uh, biliary drainage, uh, the thoracic drain uh, gives us uh, 20, 20 milliliters of pus, and the biliary drains uh, 300 uh, milliliters of uh, of bile. So uh, in this situation, we decided to. Uh, White with uh, the, both drain and uh, three months after uh, drainage, uh, pulmonary symptoms and infection had totally disappeared. Uh, the pleural drain was dry and the biliary drain was still open, uh, giving uh, 300 milliliters uh, per day. So we perform in the um, the first opacification uh, distant to the uh, appearance of uh, the bronchobiliary fistula. And at the first opacification, we don't uh, visualize any uh, persistent uh, fistulous pathway uh, through the diaphragm. Yeah. So uh, at this time, uh, what will you suggest? Uh, to manage uh, drainage uh, in, this, in his patient. 
Will you suggest to remove uh, the pleural drain? It's a very to interesting case. But yeah. <laughs> what about just clamping the drain in yeah. serially to uh, evaluate the patient before you do anything? To clamp the bad clamp, wait, yeah. see what happens. Yeah. This way you haven't burned any bridge. Yeah. yeah they, they've been waiting now three months. And uh, what should you do? This patient wants his bile drain removed. I mean, but, but you can clamp it, observe, even send him home clamped, yeah. and then wait and see how he feels. Uh, you don't have to rush to remove this, even after three months without uh, giving an evaluation. Yeah. I I'm, I'm agree with you, but my presentation uh, do not express uh, our feeling every, uh, um, every morning where, when we uh, check the patency of the drain and uh, uh, the drain uh, obs was obstructed um, many times, so we uh, uh, perform irrigation to uh, ensure the um, patency of the drain. But, but you're right, uh, maybe if we clamp the biliary drain, we will see if uh, uh, the fistula uh, appear in the, in the biliary drain. So we decided uh, to, to wait, for, uh, um, wait for six months uh, and uh, to um, repeat uh, opacification. This is uh, the third opacification six months after drainage. And we completed uh, it by a CT scan uh, with opacification uh, uh, along the drain, and we did not visualize any persistence of bronchobiliary fistula after removing the thoracic drain. So in this situation, do you think there is a possibility that the, the, the bronchobiliary fistula was cured or not? No, it will recur. I mean, you haven't understood why it appeared in the first place. Yeah. I'm sure it will recur. Yeah. Now you're you're right you're right. So unfortunately, four months later, um, the bronchobiliary fistula um, recurred, and a conservative approach uh, doesn't work. Reoperation is mandatory, uh, as uh, we we don't uh, identify the, the the real cause of the of the fistula. So, which approach uh, to consider to, to cure, or to attempt to cure this uh, bronchobiliary fistula? I, I would Did... still need to see better emptying of that loop. Yeah. I, I think there is a problem somewhere, and you haven't understood what the problem is in the first place. With reflux. Yeah. If there is something not working there. Otherwise, it would not present with a bronchobiliary fistula two years later. There is something there that's not right and you yeah. have to correct understand and correct what's not right so one question are you sure that the biliary fistula is coming from the hepatic or digenosomy segment one is in place right yeah could be that segment one has ducts that are perpetuating this fistula no and not the the biliary fistula the fistula dried uh, completely when there was a drain in, yeah. in place so, so uh, uh, when there was a drain in place, so it's not an excluded bile stump, as might have happened. Otherwise, the fistula would not have closed with the drainage. Have you performed an MRI with biliary excretion contrasts? No, because cholangiography was uh, so, so adequate, so, so we don't perform uh, MRI. And we, um, radiologists confirm confirmed us that the origin uh, was probably the hepaticogegenostomy or near the hepaticogegenostomy. Because cholangiography wouldn't give you the bile coming from the liver. Yeah. This would be MRI. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, or, or, I think or does, you must not forget that this patient was operated by somebody who did not quite know what he was doing. Yes. Because they removed the middle hepatic vein if they, while they did not have to. Uh, in So... But, but could it just be a dysfunctional intestinal loop that's not peristalsing, and that's your chronic problem yeah. with reflux? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I wanted better opacification of the loop, complete opacification of the loop. Yeah. And uh, the opacification... 
what I find, what kind of uh, exam to, to opacificate better How than the How many centimeters were you from the uh, ligament of trites to make this uh, uh, anastomosis? Is there, was there, is there a way to go from below to uh, uh, opacify it? The limb, the loop. No, but there, yeah. is, there, there was above. I mean, they must have followed in one of those many chronographies he's had, they Follow must through. have looked how was the outflow from the bowel loop. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand your, your question. Um, I, I mean, I would like to know what's the underlying problem. Yeah, yeah. It is an underlying problem. Well, we did not perform any exam before uh, deciding to, to reoperate in order to, to cure the, the fistula. But you reoperated on him. Yeah, right? yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. This is what, in the end, yeah, yeah. the Gerlas yeah. would yeah. have done. So we, we, we had, uh, at, the, at the time of the reoperation, it was a complex uh, uh, laparotomy with a large subcostal approach. Uh, the dissection was very difficult uh, due to sclerotic adhesion and rotation of the cut liver surface, and the uh, hepatic ostomy was not so easy to identify. Uh, hemorrhage occurred during uh, dissection due to injury of the vena cava, treated by suture, and actually we uh, succeeded in uh, identifying the origin of the fistula, and the fistula... Um, was not located on the anastomosis, but two centimeters above the anastomosis. And there was no structure, uh, and it explained uh, now how uh, the bronchobiliar fistula uh, occurred. Uh, the fistulous transdiaphragmatic pathway uh, was rejected, and uh, the digestive fistula repaired. And uh, we put uh, a drain uh, with the Volker method in the uh, hepaticogegenostomy uh, to, to intend to guarantee uh, good healing uh, after surgery. Unfortunately, at day uh, seven, we fear of a recurrence of the fistula because of a bill leak through the subcostal scare. Uh, with uh, evisceration, uh, which needs to, to, to proceed the reoperation. Bill Lick, um, um, the origin was not uh, uh, a recurrence of the, of the bilio, um, uh, bronchobiliary fistula, but the point of insertion of the Volker's drain, uh, which need uh, to be uh, sutured. So rehabilitation was long with prolonged local nursing care and the patient was discharged at day 45. This is uh, the CT scan six months after reoperation. Uh, the objective to, to, to show this CT scan is to uh, the discussion, the, the issue of uh, uh, do we, uh, did we uh, associate a pulmonary or thoracic uh, act with the, uh, um, with the, during surgery. Uh, as you can see, there is no uh, pulmonary sequela six months uh, after reoperation. Oh, very nice. Well, to, to conclude, uh, just a, a few messages learned about uh, this case. Uh, it's a terrible experience for the patient. Uh, a heavy burden uh, in, induced by, by uh, pulmonary symptom, symptoms as a balioptesis uh, associated with high morbidity and mortality. Fortunately, uh, it's a very rare complication after uh, hepatectomy. In our experience in Bordeaux was very limited. Uh, only three patients uh, all managed uh, surgically, two with success and one uh, uh, failure with a, a reappearance uh, and the recurrence of the, the fistula uh, in the post-operative course. It was a patient uh, uh, who uh, received prior uh, radiotherapy Maybe it's uh, one of the explanation of the recurrence. And uh, in the literature, there is uh, no uh, guidelines, no uh, unique management, only case report and case series. Uh, in our case, uh, maybe uh, 
there is a iatrogenic drainage uh, due to uh, when the pleural effusion were drained and uh, the chronic infection induced uh, by uh, maybe an um, undertreated uh, biloma at uh, the subfraining space uh, could uh, induce communication between a persistent high output biliary lake and the diaphragm. Um, the negative pleural pressure maintains the leak and worsens the output. So, um, to resolve the problem, uh, the case uh, uh, learned learn that it's mandatory to stop the leak and uh, reoperation is actually uh, required, even if it's a, complex, it's a complex procedure. Thank you. Very instructive case. Thank you very much. I have a question. Uh, in the beginning, uh, he mentioned bronchoscopy as part of the diagnosis. Uh, as Pietro mentioned, the problem was that the leakage was caused by the duodenal anastomosis by the Ruan Y. Will bronchoscopy have facilitated the diagnosis to some point and determined the source of the leak? Don't think so, but yeah. No, I don't. Uh, I don't hear the, the question. Do you think Sorry. that bronchoscopy might have helped yeah. this patient? No. Hugo. Yes, I would just like to stress one thing. I think uh, when we speak about reoperating those patients, we have to understand this is a very, very difficult operation. These are usually very difficult, and they may not result in in uh, in solving the problem unless you are very, very sure of what it is. So, for example, I remember of the several cases we treated, one of them we have to remove segment one completely convinced that it was that location that was the, the site of the fistula, and one week later, there it was again. So, so I think when we go to this uh, intervention... One week later, what? The fistula appeared again. So I think when we go to these interventions, we have to be very aware that it's going to be a very, very difficult operation. Thank you for Thank you. Monsieur Bismuth, did, did you operate on many bronchobiliary fistulas? Yes. The problem always is the biliary, is, is the bile. That means if you start, if you think that you have to treat from above, you will have a failure. You have to treat the origin of the fistula. This is what you did. And the first experience was a failure. I mean, only to treat the, 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 the I may say, uh, the upper part of the fistula. And this is a good example, I think. And this is what you have to do. It is a rare complication. You are right, a very rare complication of, uh, uh, it, Indeed, it is a subphrenic abscess that open in with bile due to the bile leak that open in the, uh, above the diaphragm. Yeah. And, and one of the key points is that the competitive pressure of the chest yes, of course. It sucks up the bile. We of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Very instructive.